welcome to this worship on Resurrection Sunday. May you find this a blessing in your life. From the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are just excited and full of awe and wonder of your excellent ways. And we just praise you and just magnify your name for being such a great and mighty God. Today, oh God, we rejoice with the angels in heaven and all of our brothers and sisters here on earth as we celebrate the day of resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you for all that that entails, for life that we are able to live, for hope that we are able to have, for peace that follows us wherever we may go. We thank you so much for loving us enough to give us a gift so precious as Jesus Christ. Oh God, today while we are in celebration and we are excited and Everyone is singing the goodness of Jesus. We know, O oh God, that there are some who are hurting and some who are confused and some who are wondering, if Jesus is so great, how come I'm in this situation? For those today, we pray, O oh God, that you would send them your love and your comfort and your peace, that your joy would be made full in them, that on this day they would know and be able to connect to a Savior who loves them, and that they will feel his love wherever they may be. God, I pray that we as Christians will go out and truly be your hands and feet, that we would go out and spread the love everywhere, God. For your word tells us that they will know that we are Christians by our love. God, help us to be great representatives of Christ today. Not just today, God, but every day that we go forth. God, I pray that on today that those things that we have been working on and those things that we have been working toward that may have been seemingly dead, God, will rise, that you might get the glory in all that we do. God, that our souls may be resurrected to a healthy state, God, that we would participate in this resurrection with Jesus, knowing that all power has been given to him and that same power, oh God, can be in us. Help us today to 
live our life full of joy and vigor and with expectation. Help us to grow as Christians, as followers of Christ, as your disciples. Help us to go out into the world and to tell others just how awesome you are and just how amazing our Jesus is. Cover us today, O oh God. Bless us upon blessings. Shine down on us. Let your peace be with us. In Christ's holy name we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Hello, I'm Deb Phelps, the Senior Pastor of Disciples Net Church, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Easter Sunday worship. Also, this is called Resurrection Sunday, the most significant Sunday in all the Christian year. And whether you've been celebrating this your entire life, maybe for decades, or you're seeking and just curious about what this is about, or a new Christian, we welcome you here. Today I'd like to speak with you about the Easter egg surprise. In many places they celebrate Easter with brightly decorated eggs, sometimes hidden under a bush. Blending the pagan holidays with the Christian traditions in a way that was supposed to remind the people of new life. And today people around the world may have Easter eggs, Christians and non-Christians alike. But I would like to give you an egg to take away with you that's not one that you can hold or eat, but one that you can hold in your heart. And I call today's message the Easter Egg Surprise. Thank you for joining us. And the egg here comes from three letters that I would like for you to keep in your mind and your heart. E, G, and G. Now, the surprise is what we see happening as Mary was making her way in the scripture to the tomb to give back to Jesus in the best way that she knew how. He had died Friday on the cross, executed. It was a horrible day for Jesus' followers around the world, even though nowadays we call it Good Friday. That was the day that Jesus had been hastily put to trial and then put to death on the cross. And that afternoon, his bloody broken body was taken down and hurriedly buried because that was the Jewish tradition. Someone that was executed needed to be buried before sunset. Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, hastily dressed in the linens. And Mary and his other followers didn't have the time that they would have liked to taken to anoint his body in oil and spices, as was the tradition of that day. And the Sabbath was beginning with sundown on Friday and would last until Saturday sundown and they could do no work then. So at the first sign of light that next day, that Sunday morning, we see Mary making her way to the tomb to give back to Jesus the best way that she could think of. She would dress his body in the oil and the spices that was traditional when someone had died. This would be her last gift to him. She thought perhaps the other scriptures tell of other women that had accompanied her there. And as they made their way to the tomb, no doubt their minds were in great grief and wondering not just how would they roll the stone away, but preparing themselves for the sight that they would see their beloved teachers, their beloved master's broken body lying there. The first surprise was when they got there and Jesus was not there. They ran to tell the other disciples and Peter and John came running and they too found the tomb empty. 
the real surprise, the surprise that changed history, the surprise that made this morning the morning above all mornings that changed the world, was that not only was Jesus not in that tomb, but Jesus had risen. Jesus was alive. Jesus had spent such a short time on earth coming to teach us what God had wanted the people to know. And then Mary, who is weeping and bends down, she hears her master's voice, Mary, Rabboni, teacher, she says, and she makes that great realization that Jesus is alive. That was the surprise that changed the world, but Jesus would remain alive in the world. He would appear before disciples and others for a while, and then Jesus would go back to the Father and leave things in the people's hands, in the hands of the disciples that were alive that day. And as Jesus says, those who would believe because of them. That's you and I. So the first thing that I can tell you, expect the surprise in every day. That surprise starts with the grace that no matter what you've been through, what's happened to you or someone that you know or love, God gives that grace that wants you to belong. If you live with Christ as your Savior, you're going to live into that surprise because God is not a God that we can predict. God's ways are higher than our ways. In Isaiah we read, as far as the heavens are separated from the earth, God's ways are higher than our ways. In Proverbs 16:9, we hear that in their hearts humans plan their courses, but God establishes their steps. If you're going to live with God, you need to be ready for a life of surprise. When I was a new pastoral care intern, one of the names they gave me was Francis. Francis, they said, was crippled by arthritis and spent her days in a bed and had great pain. And as I went to see her the first time, I thought in my mind, what must it be like to be Francis? And how can I share the message of God's hope with her best? And as I came into that darkened room, I could see that they had not exaggerated at all. The small, frail frame lay in that bed, twisted by the arthritis. Her eyes were closed, but as she heard me approach, they suddenly flew open, and I saw the surprise of the sparkle of heaven in there. She greeted me with a smile that lit up the room. And as much as I tried during that visit to turn things to her and how things were going, she kept bringing them back to the glory that it was for her to live for Christ and to make connections with people that came into her room. As long as she lived, I never saw that sparkle leave Frances' eye. When you live for God, you live into that surprise. When you're God's child, you live into that surprise. You get used to it every day. Secondly, when we live with God, we need to grow into that surprise. Grow into that surprise means that we're always learning. We're always changing as disciples. We're letting Jesus use us. Now, you would think if anyone really understood Jesus well, it was those disciples that stayed with him all the time, that accompanied him on his journeys. But from what we read in Scripture is he was always confronting them with the unexpected. Their life was a life of surprise. From that surprise, which teachers like to call cognitive dissonance or a discrepant moment, one where what you think doesn't add up to what has happened, and you have to grow aside from that, that's how Jesus taught. The story of the Good Samaritan is a good example. The Samaritan was a despised culture to many of the people that he was speaking to. The priest went by this injured man. The Levite went by this injured man. But it was the Samaritan that stopped. Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the mighty king of the Jews, the king of heaven, on a donkey. And then he got down on his knees to serve and said to be great you need to be a servant so as you serve that living Christ grow into the surprise 
And finally, you need to go because of that surprise. You become God's surprise to other people. Now it was going to be up to us. Go into all the world, he said, making disciples of all nations and teaching them what I have taught you. Go into your world. Because of the surprise that God is, because of God's grace, people may not understand you. Your life won't be predictable and won't be the same. I heard the story of a doctor that was working one winter in an inner city clinic and shelter. And it was a particularly cold day and there was snow outside and they had a steady stream of people coming in. A reporter had stopped to interview him and find out more about the program. And the doctor was talking to him, but his eye kept being drawn to a man that had just come in and they were working on over in the corner. The reporter looked down and when he looked back up, the doctor had gone away and moved over and was helping that man. And he went to watch. The people had been trying to cut the shoes off this man whose feet were swollen and infected terribly. And the stench, the smell as they were taking off the shoes had kept people back. And as the reporter watched, the doctor carefully, patiently cut away the leather from the shoes. The only sound, the snip of the scissors as he worked. And later the reporter said to the doctor, you could pay me all the money in the world and I would not do what I saw you do there. And the doctor smiled and thought a minute and looked at him and said, you could pay me all the money in the world and I wouldn't do it either. What you need to understand, what you need to write in your story there, young man, is that what we do here is for love. That's our story. Christ gives you a story today. The risen Christ gives you the surprise that you can expect in each day. The risen Christ gives you a reason to grow and keep getting stronger and better as Christ's disciple all your life. And the risen Christ gives you the words to go into the world. If, as our pastor suggests, Mary Magdalene and the disciples were asking themselves questions like, how can I give back to Jesus when they approached the tomb on Easter morning? I suggest to us all that that is still an appropriate question for all of us to ask. And part of worship is offering gifts to God. And we at DisciplesNet believe that we are in fact doing what God wants us to do as we share the message 
in word and in song. And we believe that part of how we give back to Jesus is the way that we share here. We invite you to participate in our offering. Amen. It is the risen Christ that meets us at this table. And because it is the one Lord who is our host, everyone is welcome. The table is set. Come and partake. Our Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this bread. We ask that you bless it, that when we take of it, we take in health, wealth, joy, peace, and love. And we ask you, O oh God, to bless this cup so when we take of this cup that everyone will receive your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We remember on that night, just a few days before he was crucified and rose again, when Jesus met with his disciples, he took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. Eat this and remember me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this and remember me. For I will not eat this bread or drink this cup until we share it again in the kingdom of God. Now come and join the feast. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. On this Easter morning, we send you out now to live a life of 
expecting the surprise that living with God will give you, growing into the new person each day that God is making you, and going into the world to be part of that surprise for the world, for others. Go now in peace, go now in love, and go now in God's grace. Thank you for joining us.